Hi everyone, Sandra Duran Wilson here, and welcome to this week's Mixed Media Soul Sparks. Every week I bring you some new ideas for mixed media or inspiration ideas, and this week I'm going to be sharing with you some inspiration ideas and a couple of little techniques for adhering pieces. But creativity actually thrives on limitations. It's like when you have all the possibilities in the world, it's like you get analysis paralysis and you don't know, oh, which way should I go? What should I use? What's my idea? Which colors do I use? You just kind of get overwhelmed when there's so many possibilities. It's like staring at the blank canvas. So this is what I call using up your leftovers. And it is a design challenge I've been giving myself for years. When I finish a project, I may have leftover papers, paints, different things on my table. As you can see, I usually work flat. And the challenge is, is to take some of those pieces and create a composition from them. Now, here are the limitations. I can grab, like, sometimes I just blindly grab a handful of stuff and put it aside and say, okay, I've got to make this work. Other times, like with a couple of these pieces, I selected a handful of things color-wise that already work together. Now, these are all pieces that are left over from papers I've made, things I've shown you over this past year. And how am I going to get these to work together? So the other, you know, you're limited by what you choose. Now I have this one, and I have this one. I have three things going on, and I'm probably going to work with two. That's the other key, is don't work with just one. Work with two, because as you go back and forth, you might see, oh, this piece doesn't quite go there, but it can go over here. And that'll keep you jumping back and forth. It'll keep you kind of shaking things up a bit, I guess you could say. And you can, you don't have to use everything, but, and you can add little bits of uh, paint or pencil, but you can't go grab other stuff. So those are the rules. So let me just show you what I've got going on here. And I'll kind of move that one off to the side. And I'm going to be looking at these two. Now this is this is just a paper that I've already made. This is from one of my classes, and it could be made kind of the way I showed you in one of the very first videos of creating uh, backgrounds. So it's just a rather abstract background, but it's not finished. So what am I going to do with it? So I already have this really kind of colorful, fun background. Eventually, I'll mount it onto this board. And here is where I'm working with these leftovers, piece of corrugated cardboard. I'm going to kind of keep rotating this. These are some other little leftovers, which have some interference paint. Maybe it might go this way. And the reason I keep moving things around is in composition, you want to be able to have your eye moving around your composition. And where does the eye go to first? but the area of highest contrast. So the dark is dark against the lightest light. Here is another high contrast value area. So as you work on your composition, you want to take these things into consideration. And I'm just going to maybe tear up some pieces. Maybe this is going to go under here. Now I'm not going to glue all of these down. This is just an inspiration idea. And here, I've got a repetition of kind of the dots going on with there. We've got dots there. So we've got repetition, but we've got a change in scale. And I can cut these. I can tear them. And let's just see if I just hand tear this kind of the way that one is. And it might actually, you know, play over into here gets lost in that area, so you might want to bring it to where there's another high value contrast. So if I bring it like that. Now the other thing, if I enter in, here's yet another variation of kind of a circular texture. 
and perhaps rather than the torn edges, I might want to do a cut edge, like a straight edge. So we're going to have edges, we're going to have shapes that are variety, and we're going to have value changes. So all of these pieces might even get a little hint of gold to pick it up in the end, and th that might actually be another rectangular shape or a square shape, just to kind of offset the, the rounds. So these are all ideas of how you can work with design and composition. And I'll play around with these some more and show you this one when it's finished. But let me just jump over to this other one really quick and take a look at this. So this is just a, a gesso board and I'm just going to keep it on here and play with this. Now, here's my edge of this board. Who's to say that my papers have to go all the way up, or even my composition? This may just stay white. And then I can start to add in, this is a beautiful little piece of uh, fabric that's printed. Might go into there. Here's another texture, kind of bouncing off of that color. These are some shapes. I can cut these up. That color works nicely into there. And perhaps this piece may come over in here. And I might cut this down. I might leave some edges open rather than having everything. Well, let me just open this really quick. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Rather than having my, my image go all the way around the edges, like, like this one does. I might create a blank space and have the paper just in a portion of the panel with just the blank panel. So this is kind of what I'm talking about. And I could just fold this rather than tearing it now just to give you an idea. And then some of these pieces could come in underneath and play along like here. So these are all of these fun things to do with your leftovers. There's some other pieces that could go in. And again, we're going to match the weight of the paper with the medium or the gel. So for the lighter papers, I might use a soft gel. This is a heavier paper. I'm going to use a heavy gel. For very thin tissue, I'm going to use the gloss medium, like we did in the other video. I might find that, oh, I used a little of that over there, so this might bring in some of that. That's what I was talking about. When you're working on two, you can transfer some of those pieces. Now, here's one other thing I want to share with you. Let's say you just have a bunch of pieces left over. And rather than just throwing them in the trash, I say take them and start to just glue them down, kind of overlapping, putting pieces in like this, putting things here, just not even thinking about composition, just getting stuff on. Now here was another one I was going to show you. This is just a big piece of leftover that you can then work with composition. But let's just say I take all of these and I glue all of these down. This is a great way to clean up your workspace. You glue all of this down. Use whatever glue you have. Maybe you've got some leftover gel or Mod Podge or whatever. Just get it all down. And I'm going to show you next week ways to find your composition. So here, this week, we're looking at intentional composition and using those tools, working with edges, shapes, scale change, repetition, values, all of these things of how you're going to begin to move the eye around your painting, where you enter and how you move around. And remember to keep rotating it as you're working on it. And you're going to be able to see more places of 
you know, where you might put something. Different, oh, maybe that doesn't go there. And you move something another way, and you're going to see a different change. So remember to keep doing that. Then take all your other leftovers, glue them all down, and come back next week, and I'll show you how to find the compositions in those. So I just want to let you know that Mixed Media Soul Sparks is going to be transitioning to a subscription service the first of the year. And if you'd like to keep seeing the videos, please hop on over to the uh, link down below to Awakening Your Creative Soul where you can find out more information. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week. Join the community and share your creations on social. Use the hashtag MixedMediaSoulSparks. I look forward to seeing your comments in the comment section.